10.05, welcome back to the Chad Hasty Show. News Talk 95.1 FM, 790 AM KFYO as we broadcast from the Culligan Water Studios. Better water, pure and simple. Phone lines will be open a little bit later on at 770-5790-1800-687-0790. You can follow me on Twitter, Chad HD Radio. And don't forget the KFYO text line always open at 806 680 Two seven nine zero. Joining me right now, the Lieutenant Governor for the great state of Texas, uh, Dan Patrick. Good morning. How are you, sir? Hey, Chad. Good to be with you. Good morning to you on this the uh, solar eclipse day. It's, it's a pretty eventful day in our history. I know a lot of people are excited about what is about to happen in about, what, three hours and a half, about three hours from now? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. A lot of people excited about it. Uh, before we get into special session talk, uh, I, I want yes. to get your opinion on, on a couple of items that happened uh, over the weekend. One on Friday, Six Flags over Texas. They decided not to become Six Flags anymore, and they took down all their flags except for the American flag. And then uh, the University of Texas, uh, in uh, under the cover of darkness – very brave, uh, decided to take down uh, all statues uh, that had anything to do uh, with uh, the Confederacy. Just want your opinion on that as, as a state lawmaker. Well, as a state lawmaker and lieutenant governor, uh, I'm never pleased when our flagship university uh, takes such a significant action without uh, discussing it with the legislature at all. In fact, um, I didn't learn about it until an email late last night after, I guess, 9 p.m., uh, I think the whole idea of, of, of taking the statues down, whether you agree or disagree, uh, under the cover of darkness, um, doesn't look good for the university, which is our flagship university with Texas A&M. Uh, look, you know, Governor Abbott said it, and I said it earlier uh, last week. Uh, Abbott's quote was, tearing down monuments won't erase our nation's past and doesn't advance our nation's future. We've been very clear, the governor and myself, that we will not tolerate bigotry and hatred. Uh, and racism. Uh, as I said in the Austin American Statesman last week, not here, not now, not ever. We have to stand strong on that. Uh, but tearing down our history, um, what does that accomplish? Uh, and I think that's what Governor Abbott is saying, and I, and I support his, his statement on it. We, we have to learn from our past. Uh, and where does it end, Chad? For example, uh, Jim Bowie and, and uh, uh, William Barrett Travis had slaves. Should we tear down any monuments or remembrances of them? Uh, Franklin Roosevelt, um, in turn the Japanese, which has received tremendous criticism as, as we look back on history. Should we tear down all the monuments to him, our founding fathers? Um, this, this political correctness of tearing down our history and erasing it as if it didn't exist, uh, especially on a university campus where there should be robust discussion of history, I think is troubling to a lot of people. Uh, just because you... Uh, support if people support keeping the monuments or taking them down it has nothing to do with what we see now the right the white supremacy movement and the nazis and the kkk which none of us accept and none of us want uh, anywhere in our state or in our nation Uh, i I don't know if it would be a a preemptive question or not because I, i think it's already been brought up in some circles but what would you say to those who even think about saying hey you know over at the state capitol we've got uh uh, we, we've got some statues that uh, we may want to take down. What what would you what message would you like to send to to those who uh, are going to eye the Capitol at some point? Because you and I both know it's going to happen. Uh, well, there was a motion by a Democrat uh, at the end of uh, session last week about this issue. But uh, again, the governor and I the governor and I uh, see it the same way. You don't erase our nation's past um, by tearing down these monuments. You learn from it, and you don't do anything to advance the cause of freedom uh, by doing so. And remember, Chad, that the, the, the flag, the Confederate flag, uh, is a part of our, of our uh, state symbol. Uh, it, it's it's um, in our marble, on our floors, it's throughout the Capitol. Um, so it's, it's not an issue that's to be taken lightly. Again, I think right. for the University of Texas to take these down in the middle of the night um, is quite frankly embarrassing. If you're going to do it, um, then have a robust discussion about it and explain to the people of Texas, why? Uh, but this didn't. Um, this did not look appropriate uh, the way they handled this in the middle of the night um, uh, at all. And and what about our nation's battlefields? What do we do with Gettysburg? I mean, do we just tear down that battlefield? Do we do we pave it over and put a you know put up a master plan community and take down our history? Uh, again, we have to learn from our history. 
Um, and again, I don't think anyone would suggest uh, uh, taking down statues to Bowie or Travis because they once owned slaves, because they weren't fighting uh, for freedom in Texas uh, for slavery. Visiting with Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, let's shift gears now to the special session. Uh, when it ended last week, you were not happy. Uh, you were not satisfied with, uh, at least it seems to me from the quotes, you were not satisfied with how things ended. In fact, uh, you said that uh, the uh, the Speaker of the House had treated the governor's agenda like horse manure. Uh, let's talk about that a little bit. How do you feel today, almost a week after the special session ended, uh, do you still feel as though uh, it was a, largely a disappointment? Uh, well, a couple of things, Chad. First of all, uh, the speaker is the one who said at the beginning of the special session that the governor's agenda was horse manure. Uh, my comment was, and that's how he treated it during the special session, look, a lot of good things happen. We passed more pro-life legislation in 30 days than we've ever done in a 30-day period. Uh, we passed legislation to uh, put heavy penalties on mail-in voter fraud. Uh, we ended annexation for cities without a vote of the people who would be annexed. There were some good things that were done. But major issues, uh, I can, let me just tell you seven that the Senate passed, that the people support, that the governor had on the agenda, that the Speaker of the House, Joe Sprouse, killed. He killed pro- real property tax uh, reform and relief. Um, he killed the Privacy Act. He supports boys and girls using the same restrooms and showers in schools. Parents don't in Texas. He killed defunding Planned Parenthood. The Speaker killed school choice for children with disabilities. He killed the... We passed a bill to stop the state from collecting union dues. We shouldn't be in that business. He killed that bill. He killed a bill to cap our state spending at population times inflation, and he killed a $1,000 bonus for most active teachers in the state of Texas. And he was supposed to be, quote, Mr. Education. Uh, so he killed, he killed bills that the Senate passed. Remember, Chad, as you know, in the first week of the special session, we passed 18 of the 20 items on the agenda because they were the governor's priorities, they were my priorities because they were the re- – people's priorities, not just Republicans, but many Democrats. And uh, last Tuesday, with 27 hours ago, without any notice to the Senate, without any notice to the governor's office, the speaker just gaveled out and quit. He quit on the people of Texas. And that's why I said, you know, thank goodness he wasn't at the Alamo. He'd looked at his watch and told Travis, you know, it's time for me to go here before the last battle. We had big issues to negotiate and uh, work through uh, in the last day, and he just up and quit. Texans don't like quitters. And the House quit with him. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick joining us here on the Chad HD Show. Let let me ask you this, because I asked the governor last week, you know, how does a conservative agenda, his agenda, which aligned, both of your agendas aligned together, uh, you and the governor. uh, With the people of Texas. And and y'all's agenda aligned, it met a dead end, at least part of it, more than half of it, uh, met a dead end with the Speaker of the House. And and the governor said, well, Speaker's either, you know, and and I'm paraphrasing here, the Speaker's going to have to get on board with these issues or uh, representatives are going to have to listen to the people. Uh, I, I will ask you this. There are some members of the House who are extremely loyal to the Speaker of the House. You know that. Uh, will you uh, make make it a, a campaign issue? Will you, if someone is running against uh, someone who is extremely lo- uh, loyal to Speaker Joe Strauss and they're running a campaign against them in the House, will you go out and, and maybe campaign uh, with, with those challengers? Well, I'm on the ballot myself, and I'll run my race, uh, Chad, and, and I, won't, uh, I won't be involved in the speaker politics. However, uh, what each voter has to ask his representative, uh, who, are, who are you more loyal to? The speaker, who represents a very liberal agenda, which does not match up with West Texas, I can tell you that. Or are they loyal to you, the voter? I t- look, the, the, the problem that we have here, Chad, is that... Uh, the governor and I run statewide. We're elected by the people of Texas. We have to lay out our agenda, and people have to support it or not, and elect us to office. And then it's our obligation to fulfill our campaign promises, which the governor did during the regular session, and I did, and the Texas Senate did. Charles Perry did, great senator from West Texas. Um, uh, the House didn't. Uh, but the Speaker is not elected by the people of Texas. He is indirectly by the representatives. But Joe Strauss became Speaker uh, 10 years ago when at that time, 64 Democrat House members joined 12 Republicans. So you have a speaker that owes his election to, to Democrats and liberal Republicans. That's who he owes it to. And today there are only 55 Democrats. But that's why when I read you that list, chat of bills he didn't pass, those are all items that Democrats don't like uh, and some liberal Republicans. So the question has to be asked. 
for example, people need to ask their local representatives, did you or did you not uh, sign on to uh, support the privacy bill uh, in the special session? Several did in the regular session when they knew the bill was dead uh, so that they could go home and tell their voters, hey, look, I, I, my name was on the bill. But in the special session, ask them, did they sign on? Uh, because, uh, let's see, about 44 Republicans didn't sign on to protecting uh, women in bathrooms from men walking in, any man, not just transgender, but any man. They didn't vote with parents, Chad, to stop boys and girls from using sign on to that bill. Uh, and that's the question that needs to be asked. Are they representing the people when they campaign? They're all up for election. Uh, do they support lowering property taxes? Do they support defunding Planned Parenthood? Why didn't they uh, speak up? Why didn't they add their names to these bills? Uh, and that's what the people need to ask, and it will take care of itself. I have, I have two more questions for you before we, yes, uh, before we let you go today. Uh, looking into uh, a crystal ball, let's, let, let's look ahead to the next legislative session. Do you believe yes. a conservative agenda can get passed if Joe Strauss remains Speaker of the House? Uh, it is uh, it is difficult, but we, uh, the governor and I, in the Texas Senate, uh, and we have a very conservative Texas Senate, uh, and we did our job. We passed twenty. I'm sorry, we passed all thirty of our conservative priorities during the regular session, and about half got to the governor's desk. And we passed um, uh, again eighteen of the governor's agenda items, and about half got passed to the governor. So what we need is Governor Abbott, as governor, myself as lieutenant governor, to fight against uh, the speaker if he is still the speaker. Um, it, took a, it takes us longer to do things than it should, Chad. For example, sanctuary cities, we finally passed this session. And what did the speaker say afterwards? Uh, first of all, we passed a bill, uh, Charles Perry, uh, your senator, passed a solid bill to end sanctuary cities. It went to the House and they watered it down to next to nothing. It would have had very little impact. And on the House floor, conservative House members, and there are many, uh, amended that bill to make it strong again. And Joe Strauss afterwards said, that's not the bill I would have passed. So... The members can overrule the speaker, uh, but that's only if he gets them, gives them a chance to vote. And so what's even worse than killing the conservative agenda by the speaker, what's even worse is he doesn't let them vote on many issues because he'll know he'll lose. He didn't let privacy come to the floor. It would have passed easily. On the property tax issue, Chad, on the last day, the speaker did something unprecedented. He wouldn't even let members amend the bill. Uh, to make it real property tax relief. And the reason, by the way, we didn't take the bill and pass it, and it's been one of my priorities, highest priorities since being elected, was I'm not going to go to the people of Texas and say, we passed a property tax bill uh, that did nothing. I'm not going to go home and, and, and look people in the eye and say, oh, we passed that did nothing. And that's what they wanted to do. That's exact. They passed a bill that did nothing. And um, so we, we have to stand and fight. Uh, I'm not a quitter like the Speaker. The Senate is not quitters like many of the House members who, who want to look. There are many conservative House members who didn't like what the Speaker did and quit early, but he's the Speaker. And right. so uh, he has tremendous power over there. But Governor Abbott will not quit, and I will not quit, on fighting for our conservative agenda. And, uh, and hopefully at least, uh, if he's still Speaker, he will let the members vote on these key bills. But these issues are going to come back, Chad. Right. You can't hide from them forever. Uh, last question. I have about a, a minute, minute and a half yes, uh, here. Uh, I know it's up to the governor to call a, a second special session. Uh, last week when I spoke with him, he said, you know, things would have to get done. <laughs> In other words, uh, you know, there would have to be a movement on these pieces of legislation that did not get passed in the first special session. Given that, do you think we'll see a second special session, and would you like to see a second special session? Well, that's the governor's call, and I'll respect his decision. I know this, that um, I think uh, the members need to go home, and I think they need to fa face their public, and I think they, they need to be asked honest questions. Uh, for example, on property tax relief, 46 Republicans in the House supported our property tax bill that the governor supported that would have cut property taxes over $200 million moving forward. And and 44 members voted with the Speaker that would have done nothing to cut or, or reduce or reform property taxes. So let's see, which, which bill did they agree on? I think people need to go back and be asked by their members in a town hall meeting or in a forum or a debate. Uh, did you sign your name on the privacy bill, or do you support boys and girls using showers and locker rooms in high school? Do you support boys taking scholarships away from girls by playing on their teams because they identify as the opposite gender, and that will happen? Uh, they need to put the, the folks on the record. 
And then maybe after they've heard from their voters for 90 days, you know, if the governor calls us back, I don't know if he will or he won't. But, uh, you know, our our primary is in early March. Early vote starts in mid-February. I wonder how they would vote if they were called back in mid-January, 30 days before early vote. I wonder how they will vote when they have someone campaigning against them on their record. Um, Things could change. I don't know that they would, but things could change. We'll see what the governor does. Lieutenant Governor, as always, we appreciate your time, and uh, we will visit uh, soon again. Hey, thanks, thanks, Chad. And, uh, again, you're Senator Charles Perry. And I don't say this lightly, did a terrific job, uh, again, strong on the Sanctuary City Bill, strong conservative. I'm proud to have him there. And uh, our Texas Senate is standing up for the people of Texas. And uh, I, I hope one day House members who are conservative get the chance to, but they have to stand up and be bold on their own. Many have and more need to. Hey, thanks. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick here on the Chad HD Show. News Talk 95.1 FM, 790 AM, KFYO. I don't think the uh, lieutenant governor and the speaker of the house will be hanging out anytime soon. Just got to say that.